So now we've covered two different ways to sort of characterize a production function. We've talked about the marginal product of labor and capital. And that's how the output changes when you change one of the inputs on its own. And we've talked about the uh, returns to scale, which is about how output changes when you change uh, both inputs at the same time. And we're also going to now cover a third way to think about characterizing production functions, which is what happens if you change uh, labor and capital in different directions? In particular, we're going to think about, suppose you want to keep the quantity fixed at a certain level. You want to produce always the same amount of food, but you can do it with more or less capital. What's the trade-off there? And that's going to be an important question or an important tool for us to have. So to study that, we use uh, a tool called an isoquant. Iso means same quant for quantity. And so let's think about a diagram where we have on one axis labor and in the past we've drawn like a diagram that has Q over here and it tells us how much output you get when you increase labor. But we're not going to do that this time. We're going to put on this axis K. So we've now got the two inputs that we're graphing. Okay, and let's say that at this point here, this is for producing some quantity of food, and we'll say it's equal to 10. Okay, what does this mean? This means that if you have uh, this level of capital and this level of labor, so we could say this is 5 and this is 35, just making things up, and you follow the instructions in your uh, you know, manual, you're going to be able to produce 10 units of output. So we could say this is food. But that's not the only way to get 10 units of output. There might be other ways, right? In particular, maybe there's a way that uses a lot of labor, but not very much capital. So we'll say there's an alternative set of instructions, an alternative way to go, where instead of five, maybe use 15 laborers. And instead of 35 units of capital, let's say that this is uh, 8, okay? And this is just another way to also produce 10 units of output. So you've got the choice between the capital-intensive way and the labor-intensive way. And there might be a third option somewhere in the middle here, okay? And in fact, we can ass we're going to sort of make the leap to assuming that there's actually tons of different ways and we are able to connect them all together in a line and this line is called an isoquant and any combination of capital and labor on the isoquant produces the same amount of quant, the same output. Same Q, okay? In this case, Q equal to 10, okay? And, you know, it turns out that this will be useful to know. Now, what happens if we produce, a what, what happens if we have a quantity of capital and labor that's not on this line, okay? So suppose we're out here where we've got uh, 35 units of capital, and I'm trying to have this be 15 units of labor. Well, we know that we're gonna be able to make at least 10 units of food, because if we only had uh, 10, if we only had five laborers and 35 units of capital, we would be able to make 10. Yeah, now we have an extra 10 laborers, so we can just tell them to go sit in a corner and make the same amount, or we can put them to work and probably make even more. In fact, we can, let's just assume that you can make more here, so there's Q equal to 20 out at this point here. And we could kind of go through the same exercise again. This might be another area that makes 20. This might be another combination of inputs. And we could draw a second isoquant, okay? And in general, so let me get this thing over here. That's how we're going to draw isoquant. Isoquants map, there's kind of like a whole lot of different options here. Anywhere on this line, for example, might make 10. Anywhere up here, any combination on that line may make 20. 
And there can be any kind of combination in between these two also. 15 in the middle here, 25, whatever. The numbers aren't important. The important thing is that Q is increasing as we go up and to the right because as we go up and to the right, we're making, we're uh, giving more and more inputs to the production of this output, okay? And in general, we assume that if you increase the quantity of inputs and outputs, you're gonna be able to get more bang for your buck, or you're gonna be able to get more output out, okay? Now, so this is what an isoquant is, diagram, diagrammatically. In the next one, we're gonna talk about how we use it to analyze some stuff.